Hi all, Larry Feldman with a lesson on quadratic equations and the quadratic formula. Um, what I wrote on the screen is a uh, standard form of the quadratic or a quadratic equation and I'm going to derive the quadratic formula by using a method called completing the square. And uh, the first step is to divide both sides by a like this and the left side simplifies to x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a and the right side just becomes 0 because 0 divided by a is 0 and then we're going to subtract c over a from both sides so we get x squared plus b over a times x equals negative c over a. Now at this stage we're going to complete the square which uh, doesn't seem obvious to most people at first but um, I think you'll get the hang of it. It's, it's the same method every time. What we do is we write the first two terms and then we need to add a third term to the left side and the right side. And that third term has to be something very specific. Namely, we take b over a and we multiply it by one half and then we square it. So we have b over 2a, excuse me, b over 2a all squared. Boy, is that messy. Let me do that again. b over 2a all squared. Now, that doesn't seem obvious, but the reason why we did that is to make the left side factorable. So, since we added that term, that new term, to the left side, we have to also add it to the right side so that the equation stays balanced. So, let's just add that in here. So as I said, um, the left side becomes factorable, and uh, I'll spare you the uh, gory details, but basically it factors like this, x plus b over 2a, all squared, and you could uh, demonstrate that, that this um, term squared is equivalent to this trinomial, but um, I won't... Uh, eat up the time in the video to do that, but it's a pretty straightforward matter. The right side, um, we're going to simplify a little bit further, negative c over a plus um, b over 2a quantity squared. Now that becomes b squared over 4a squared. So let's look at that. b over 2a quantity squared. That means we square the numerator and square the denominator, so we're left with b squared over 4a squared. Now we need a common denominator so that we can combine these two fractions. So you can tell that we need to multiply the top and bottom of negative c over a by 4a. So let's multiply top and bottom by 4a, and doing that gives us the common denominator so that we can add the numerators or um, we can add those fractions more specifically. So we have negative 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. So now let's um, let me make some room over here. And we're going to continue by um, writing the left side like this, x plus b over 2a, all squared. And that equals what we wrote on the right side here. Although what I want to do now is I want to flip-flop these terms. and I, I want to put the b squared first. So we have b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. 
And at this stage, we take the square root of both sides. And on the left, we have x plus b over 2a. And on the right, we have plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over the square root of 4a squared. And uh, please remember that we need this plus or minus because when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, there can be a positive and negative solution. So uh, continuing on, we have x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over now what is the square root of 4a squared? Well it's simply 2a by taking the square root of each each piece square root of 4 is 2 square root of a squared is a and then we need to subtract b over 2a from both sides and I'm going to put that in the front like this negative b over 2a plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now we're in the home stretch. I'm just going to uh, make a little bit more room and uh, we just need to clean this up a little bit more. As you can see we have a common denominator. We have 2a and 2a. So this becomes opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And this is the quadratic formula. So let's just do a quick example. Let's say we have x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. Now, if we were to factor this, you would see that the terms are x minus 3 and x plus 2 equals 0. So by foiling, we have x times x is x squared, outer is 2x, inner is negative 3x, those add to negative x, the last term is negative 6, and from, from this stage, we can see that x equals 3 and negative 2 are solutions to this quadratic equation. Now let's use the quadratic formula, and in doing so, we should get the same answers, obviously. So at this stage, let's identify a, b, and c. a equals the coefficient of x squared. So a is 1, b is the coefficient of x, so that's negative 1, and c is the constant, which is negative 6. Using the quadratic formula and substituting in those values, we get x equals opposite of b, so that's negative negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's negative 1 squared, minus 4ac, and be careful with parentheses, make sure that you use them, all over 2a, and uh, when we simplify this, we get uh, negative negative 1 is positive 1, plus or minus the square root. Negative 1 quantity squared is 1. And we have 4 times 1 times negative 6. That's negative 24. But we have a negative sign here, so we end up adding 24. Sorry about that. Then we put that over 2. Then we have 1 plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2, which is 1 plus or minus 5 over 2. 
which yields two answers. The first answer is 1 plus 5 over 2, which is 6 over 2 or 3. And the second answer is 1 minus 5 over 2, which is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. And notice that we have the same answers here and here using the quadratic formula that we also found through factoring. The benefit of the quadratic formula is that it can be used on any quadratic equation, whereas factoring cannot always be utilized. Anyway, that's it for now, and um, I look forward to speaking with you next time. Thanks.